it on. Okay, welcome everyone to Artivism, the Power of Art for Social Transformation. Um, we are here again today. We're sponsored by Adelphi University, Goddesman Libraries, um, Teachers College, Columbia University, and Sync for Hope. Um, today we have Paz uh, Tanwakio. Um, Ms. Tanwakio has been active in New York City since 1990 as a choreographer, performer, visual artist, and educator, and is a six-time marathon runner. That's amazing. <laughs> she is co-founding director of Topaz Arts, Inc., a nonprofit center in Queens, New York, um, now in its 21st year. Um, a, yes, a collaborator, uh, um, with collaborator Todd B. Richmond to provide creative space for contemporary performance and visual art. Her choreography integrates art forms from dance and performance to visual art, film, and design, creating images through movement. Her works have been presented by La Mama, Wazaic Projects, 92Y um, Harkness Dance Center, Fisher Landau Center for Art, Dance Space Project, Movement Research at Judson Church, among others, nationally at Operation Unite in Hudson, New York, San Diego Trolley Dance, American Dance Festival, Screen Dance, Philadelphia Fringe Festival, and internationally at La Commune in Geneva, Switzerland, and residencies in Japan, Korea, and her birthplace in the Philippines. Awards include Artist Relief, National Endowments of the Arts, Dance NYC's Dance Advancement Fund, Foundation for Contemporary Arts Emergency Grant, NYFA, the Suitcase Funds Mekong Project in Cambodia and Vietnam. Residencies include um, Katzban in, in Tivoli, New York, Akigoshidai International Art Village in Japan, The Yard at Martha's Vineyard, Atlantic C Center for the Arts in Florida. As a dancer, she has performed for Melissa Fenley, Nikki Parseo, uh, Pareso, sorry, Dean Moss, Carl Hancock Rooks, Marley Zierby, among others. She has taught dance full-time at SUNY Nassau Community College, adjunct at NYU Tisch School of the Arts, and as a guest artist at CUNY, Queens College, Sacramento State University, Frank Sinatra School of the Arts, and Vargas Museum at the University of the Philippines. She received her MFA in dance from NYU Tisch of the Arts and BA in visual arts from the University of California, San Diego. Paz is a member of the New York State Dance Force and serves on the steering committee of the Bessie's New York Dance and Performance Awards. Um, if anybody wants to learn more, you will visit her website, which uh, uh, um, Paz will tell us about, or you can visit um, Artivism at Adelphi, uh, where you will see her complete bio and a little bit more. Uh, so thank you all for being here. I need to let everybody in the room. Okay, there you go. Welcome everyone. Hello, thank you everyone. So excited to be here and thank you for having me. I'm Paz Tanwakio. I'm a Filipina American. I was born in the Philippines and my family immigrated when I was five years old to America. So that was um, my first experience as um, um, the, those experiences affect me today as, um, as I make work. So I wanted to just start by just giving you a little bit of a movement class yeah <laughs> not a class but as we um, transition from virtual to in person um, being virtual all this time in the past year and a half um, this pandemic year it's been hard right so um, and um, being together on screen is is hard to connect because we can't be physically together but we are here together um, on screen. So I wanna just take a moment for a second to just breathe together. Yeah, um, I only see, I'm not seeing faces, but um, follow along, yeah. So if, you, if you're sitting down, just take a breath, breathing in and out. And just pay attention to where you're sitting, your room, 
and just listening on screen, um, being present in the room that you're in, but also we're connecting through this screen. So again, just breathing in this time, we're taking our shoulders up and making a circle. Yeah, I hope you guys are doing this. <laughs> if you feel welcome to put your screen on, that would be lovely. Hello, thank you. Good. So we're circling our shoulder blades. Yeah, good. Nice. And then we're going to circle our elbows. Good. Yeah. Take those elbows and make a wide circle wherever you are, either sitting or standing, breathing. Good. And circle the other way. So going back to front. Good. You can do this all you know, during the day when you're at your desk. Yeah. <laughs> and get in your fingertips and let's just bring them wide circle good again circle nice good and circle the other way so the opposite direction good breathe good if any more can join in the video that would be lovely good Great. Well, thank you all for joining me in that movement. Yeah. Um, it's important to know our bodies. So when, when I'm teaching either choreography or movement, it's really nice and to focus in on your body so that the more we know our anatomy, the more we can share fully our experiences. Yeah. So the anatomy that we all have is something we all share as humans. So that's what I love about movement and sharing movement because all of us are made about made with the same cells, you know, muscles, skeletal. We're all equal in that way. So the anatomy is a, a, a key to equality. Yeah. So I just wanted to start with that so that we can connect um, movement wise and be together in this room. So thank you all. And I want to just um, continue on. If there's any questions as we go along and if you wanna repeat any movement, just raise a hand, yeah, that would be great. Yes, so we will, I'll just go through how I came to where I am today. Again, um, my name is Paz. I'm, I'm talking to you from Woodside, Queens in New York City. And we are on the land of the Lenape, Muncie Lenape. And actually where this space is right now used to be a Native American footpath. So lots of history here. So before arriving to Woodside in 2000, where we founded Topaz Arts, a nonprofit arts organization, um, I came to New York City in 1990 to explore New York and to discover myself as a person and artist. So I got here um, before that, I was a, a visual artist. I did my undergraduate at U University of California, San Diego, where I did visual arts studio. So I came to New York seeking opportunities and we, I, I discovered that dance became my form that I eventually um, pursued. So the more classes I took, I discovered that dance became my form of expression. So here I am today. Um, so as, uh, as I discovered more and more choreographers to work with and more classes to take, I really wanted to focus on choreography. So I entered into New York University, the dance department, and was able to attend through a partial scho scholarship. And um, I did my master's in at NYU Tisch School of the Arts. And that was in 92 to 94. So after graduating, graduating there, I kept choreographing, 
collaborating with different artists and discovered many um, discovered that travel also is part of my process. Um, I was able to travel to the Philippines for the first time after leaving and discovered um, made a, a even my first evening length work based on that experience of traveling back to the Philippines. So that was 1999 and I made um, a piece called Strange Fruit and Other Secrets. So that was um, a big experience to um, create a full evening work with five dancers collaborating with four writers and um, visuals by Todd Richmond and uh, video and film. So from there, I also made a lot of um, dance films in collaboration with Todd Richmond. I can probably um, maybe with, if we have time, show you some of the work that we've done. But I also just wanted to uh, introduce to you the space that we created. So after collaborating, collaborating with Todd Richmond, our focus was really about creating a space, not only for our work that we can make and create work. We also wanted to create a space that was a big need for the community. So we created a space that was affordable for other artists and also to provide a nonprofit that would support artists in making their work and then sharing it with the community. So in 2000, we searched all over New York City and ended up finding a space here in Woodside, Queens, which was a raw warehouse space that we have we've turned into a dance studio and gallery space. So I'm gonna walk you through the, the space in a bit, but um, we took what was, this was back in 2000, so that um, it was kind of open territory that um, a lot of people, you know, it was hard to find space and space is hard to find. So that was our mission to um, provide that. So here we are 21 years later and um, I'll, I'll walk you through the space so that you can experience what the space looks like. So we are gonna take a walk around. Yeah, let me just grab this. So here we are at Topaz Arts in Woodside, Queens. This is the dance studio that um, we created. Um, it was, it's made with a sprung floor um, and it's also a heated. Not a lot of green initiatives yet. So we took a lot of research to find out how to make a heated floor. We had um, done a residency in Korea where all their homes were heated from below. So that, you know, you sleep on the floor, the, the floor is heated from the bottom. So we, we really wanted to create a dance studio that had a heated floor. So knock on wood, it's still working today. We created um, in the winter time, of course, it heats from the bottom so that it's um, filled with sand underneath this floor. And then a uh, hot water pipes a snake through it, and that disperses the heat out just like a beach, it disperses the heat. <laughs> so, and it's an efficient way to uh, heat a big space like this so that you save energy and it's a cleaner way to heat a space. And so yesterday we had this big event. Um, I hope you can hear me as I'm talking. Um, we uh, premiered a new video on this back screen and we had um, poets, um, poetry readings as well as um, live dance. So it was a one in two years. So it was quite um, very meaningful space to bring back the audience. And we also put in the LED lights. Um, we were one of the first ones to put in these uh, efficient um, LED uh, theater lights uh, back in 2010, I think. Yeah, so it was um, 
our our mission is to be energy efficient um, from the get go when we first started. So I'll talk. I'll walk you through to the front space. Um, so we're now at the back space of the dance studio. We rent out this back space to choreographers and professional artists that are working on their um, material. And that's available through subsidized um, space uh, rentals that we offer for $10 an hour for this big space. So um, those are available through uh, grants that we have to get so that we can subsidize the costs for artists. So up here is the gallery space. So this was a raw warehouse um, when we first got it in 2000. We worked on it and made it to what it was today. And um, most of the stuff, more, most of the material we use are recycled and reused materials. So as we walk around, I'll show you some of the things we've done. This exhibit is um, large scale paintings by Todd Richmond, who's the co-founder of Topaz Arts. He's um, a visual artist and filmmaker. And um, this is his only his third solo exhibit in our 21 year history. So aside from this, we also have done many, many artists, uh, visual artists internationally and locally as well. So a lot of different artists of talk you through some of that too. So I'm going to just walk you through the space so they can join me virtually <laughs> through this tour. This um, These paintings are obviously um, inspired by the Queensboro Bridge that we are here in Queens, yeah, that we cross over each time. And up here is, I don't know if you can see it, it's dark now, but um, there's this polycarbonate material um, that we found at the Materials for the Arts. That's an organization that a lot of you should know. It's um, a nonprofit in Queens that allows artists and nonprofits to go to their warehouse and find um, donated and reused materials and then be able to get it for free and use it. So we found this material there and was we were able to install it. And what it is, is kind of like a greenhouse material so that it's a passive solar, so that the sun comes through, heats the um, floor, and that's like a mass heating so that it's a energy efficient way to heat, again, a big space. And we also installed it up on the roof. Um, there's also a garden we've started a organic roof, roof garden right away when we first started so that we also grow um, vegetables and fruits blueberries strawberries that we share with the artists once we harvest we pick it and share it with the artists that come here and our events as well so back here is another painting largest painting that Todd's done and we also our first install was this energy efficient heat uh, fireplace it's a gas fireplace but it's a very efficient um uh fireplace that's a gas gas power um this is a painting that's inspired is a depiction of a famous artist from Queens that um, is an influ influential artist that's been, um, his name is jo Joseph Cornell, and it's on Utopia Highway. And he's a really influ influential artist that has been part of um, our, you know, the history of contemporary art that, um, and, but he made all his work here in Queens. So back here, back towards the dance studio. Again, more the Queensboro Bridge series. And then back here is his large painting of a Central Park tree. Yeah, so we also had a installation this past weekend that was just deinstalled, but that happened through there. Keep the dance. No, that's okay. We also have, um, uh, kitchen facilities that the dancers and choreographers and artists can use 
um, throughout their day as they use space. So we provide all that as, as they make their work here. So I'm going to go back into the dance studio so we can have a seat. So it's actually Todd who's walking me around. <laughs> if you're wondering how this is happening. <laughs> um, I'm going to sit back down. And if anyone has questions um, as we're walking through, uh, the tour. I'm going to look at the chat and see if there's any questions. Yeah, Queens, yes. <laughs> Great. Um, yeah, um, it's been, it's our 21st year. And uh, as I mentioned, we just had an exhibit and this is the program. And we had um, Luis Francia, who's a well-known artist, um, sorry, poet and author. And we read through his poetry of um, two texts from his poetry books, the, the Beauty of Ghosts, and also the Sahara of I. And there was many different interpretations of that. I created one new, um, two new dances um, based on his, um, based on his text. And we also showed um, a video of our 20 year. So I think I will show that now. What we did was last year because it was the pandemic and we still are in the pandemic. Um, we created this video that we were able to compile 20 years of Topaz and display, we tried to, put everything together in one video, but here it is. And if you can, yeah, full screen, great. Oops. Yeah. Is that playing or did that just stop? Okay. Um, sorry. I think what I'll do is share my videos so I can play it directly from my computer. Is that all right? Okay. So let's stop that video. Thanks. And I'll share my screen let me get that set up and their screen hope you can see it okay and i will um give me a second and here it goes all right
into three and a half minutes. <laughs> um, yeah, there's much more that um, we've shown throughout the years. But yeah, that's the footage that we compiled together last year when we couldn't have our 20 in person. We had a virtual um, uh, event. So it was really me meaningful to have an in-person event just yesterday at celebrating our 21st year. And it was, um, we are continuing to slowly reopen. We've been closed. Um, even though we've been closed, we, we're very active in continuing to support artists. So through my work with the New York State Dance Force, it's a statewide organization of 20 members throughout the state of New York. And our mission is to disperse um, and increase the activity of dance throughout New York State. So each member is, gets to you know, present different artists and be able to collaborate with different parts of New York State. And that way we can uh, share resources and be able to share dance throughout the state. And there's a new initi initiative actually that, um, that will be coming out that will support artists throughout all, all regions of New York. And that's gonna be coming up soon. And another organization I'm part of is the Bessies, which is the New York State performance, dance and performance awards, which is equivalent to um, the Oscars or the Tonys, but for dance. So I am the chair of the steering committee there. And our focus is really just, it's not really about winners. Yeah, what we focus on is to elevate dance and also to find the best in dance. And, um, keeping dance alive in New York City also is very important. So it's been really um, a hard last year, yeah, because everything was virtual. So uh, our ceremony this year was virtual as well. So hopefully we can go back to in-person um, uh, events again so that we can hug each other. <laughs> yeah, so. Along with my advocacy work, I also 
teach. Um, right now I'm adjunct at New York University at Tisch School of the Arts, and I'm teaching choreography at the Experimental Theater Wing for the Drama Department. And that's been really a great experience. We're just back into in-person teaching this fall. So it's been a really great um, coming back, being in the room with, with students and moving together. We're all still masked and um, with the vaccine uh, vaccinations. And it's been, knock on wood, it's been working. Yeah, um, it's been really a great um, experience to be together in a room again and create. And creating, keeping on creating, I hope, um, I'm sure we've got artists in the room today. Um, the focus is really to keep creating and that's why we made this space to start out with so that along with supporting, creating our own works, as I mentioned, we support the work of other artists and also Focusing on artists that are, you know, not mainstream, that are right here in the neighborhood, also from different parts of the world, that um, bridging those cultures that we were we're all part of, right? Especially here in Queens, it's um, it's a very diverse community of many many different cultures, and it's been. Um, it's been great to find new artists and also share showcase works that um, you know artists from uh, established artists also come here, but also get the feedback from our community. So it's a give and take, and it's really a wonderful sharing in that way. In fact, our next live event, because we're returning to live events. Uh, it will be November 6th, um, which will showcase an open showing by choreographer Melissa Fenley. And she is a prominent artist in the community. And she just won a Bessie for um, reconstructing her work, State of Darkness. And she'll be showing um, a work here with four dancers. And that'll be Saturday, November 6th. I will... I can, I don't have the link yet, but um, uh, I can share that hopefully with everybody soon. Um, yeah, you can check our website, topazarts.org. Um, we have the information there and also, you know, follow me on Instagram and all that stuff. <laughs> and if there's other questions, um, I would love to hear from you guys out there about what you guys do yeah it'd be great to know um, what brought us together here today really a great time yeah okay um thank you so much miss um, um tan wakio uh for being our artist today uh, uh just our up next event will be on november 8th at 5 30 p.m eastern time dr susan campos Fonseca from the Universidad de Costa Rica will be presenting and the keynote speaker for this event is Ambassador Rodrigo Carazzo from the United Nations. Uh, before we open the floor for, um, for our participants to ask you questions, um, I'm just gonna put up a short poll, but we can begin the discussion as this poll is um, being, let me just put it up very quickly. I'm sorry, okay. Um, Yes. Um, follow us on Instagram as well at Artivism for Shared Humanity. Um, most of our presentations, for those that agree to be recorded, are on our YouTube channel. Again, Artivism for the number four, Shared Humanity. Um, follow us, uh, visit our website. Um, we're also hosting an open call um, of art. It could be poetry, it could be visual art, it could be whatever you create on our Instagram account, you could just tag us and upload your work. Um, if you would like to get more involved in this ongoing initiative, please contact the Artivism team at adelphi.edu. I would like to open now the floor for any questions, discussions. Um, this was beautiful. I love the interdisciplinary 
aspect and feel of your um, of your initiative. You know, it's dance, it's music, it's theater, it's multicultural. It's it's just it's beautiful. Um, congratulations! Yes, it's I mean it's just amazing in twenty one years. Um, yes, and we do have one of your residents here, Melanie Shaw. I don't know if she wants to say something quickly. Um, what I did want to ask was. Um, and actually, Brittany Baldwin, who's uh, uh, in the art department, I believe, at Adelphi University, she wants to know how um, one can connect with your community. Uh, do you host specific events that are targeted towards the community? And I also wanted to ask, because this is um, kind of a platform where we encourage reciprocity, how could our students get involved in your initiative, right? Do they contact you? Do you offer internships? Great. Um, the best way is to come to our openings, yeah, and um, get to know us. Like I said, we curate all our um, all our exhibits and all our uh, events here. So getting to know us and through that way, just by visiting us through our events is the best way to contact us and um, sign up for our emails. And we can, um, yeah just begin conversations that way. And we we work organically with artists, yeah, so that um, we get to know each other that way, you know, as, as we see more work and see, you know, the trajectory of um, the artist's works, then we collaborate in that way. Yeah. So RG, I want to thank you. And it's, a, it's such a pleasure to see Paz especially during these times. I, I think we worked together when I was on the board of the Queen's Museum of yeah. Art, uh, we met. And yeah. um, it was so wonderful today to get to see her space because that's something I've always wanted to go see. And yeah. oh my goodness, I, we, we spoke about it where I was supposed to reach to, see, to, to get to see her space. So that was wonderful. And I'm so happy you're doing such great work and Archie's doing so much to, to promote the Artivism um, right. initiative. Yeah, yeah. Um, again, thanks for reminding me. The Queen's Museum of Art was uh, one of our partnerships early yes. on, um, 2003 to about 2010 or 11, actually yeah. 2012, where we uh, did an open call for choreographers to present work there and also rehearse there in the museum. So we mm -hmm. chose four artists per summer that got to rehearse and perform there. And that was a really successful program mm -hmm. and yeah. by film and outdoor performances. And it was really a great um, mm -hmm. that we had together. And yeah, different partnerships. We also had um, an exhibit. We brought 20 artists from the Philippines works here in 2012 and we showcased that all over the city, again, Queens Museum here at Topaz, also gallery in Chelsea and NYU, so that we had that, ex trying to recreate the experience of being in, in Manila, but bringing it here in New York. So it was an intense time, yeah. But um, that was also during Superstorm Sandy. So <laughs> a lot of challenges that you have, right? But we will, yeah. yeah. Um, Sydney Bokaran wants to ask something or make a comment. Sure. Uh, thank you for this presentation. Um, really thrilled to see uh, uh, a work by a fellow Filipino. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. I'm I'm from the Philippines, so it's like oh, <laughs> uh, wonderful to hear about this and uh, the work that you've been doing, not just personally, but in terms of 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 of, of um, helping our community. Um, elevate our work. Um, I'm, I'm curious about your, your, your own choreography in terms of how, how it's infused uh, by indigenous elements or, or particular Philippine practices. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I will definitely check out your work now. I'm so yeah. curious. No, I'm really glad you asked that. Yes, um, as I mentioned, I had that first um, visit back to the Philippines in 97 where I really wanted to research where my dancing came from. And um, because I was trained in ballet and modern here, but I really wanted to find where 
this grounded groundedness that I had in my own style. And that really came from, I think, the roots of where we come from, right? So um, I tr we traveled to Mindanao and um, discovered, you know, the the ancient styles from there. And I I started to incorporate that, um, and also just noticing what um, similarities and differences that I had from those styles, um, and incorporating and acknowledging what was inherent in my body. And again, back to anatomy, you know, taking it back to our bones and bone structure, just acknowledging now that we are acknowledging different styles and it's not all ballet here and modern here, it's all incorporated now. Um, so actually, if we have time, I can show some of the choreography that came from that trip. Um, let me just quickly get that link. Um, one second, um, it's on the Vimeo. Carolina, do you have that link um, that I sent? I'll try to get it up quickly, one second. While I'm doing that, up and I can share my screen um, quickly. Sorry, let me get that up. Yeah, I just want to show this short clip. Oh, here it is. And I will share. Where do I share screen? Sorry. <laughs> there it is. Share screen. Here we go. Hope it's working. Okay. And this is one, two, three. A B C one, two, three. A, B, C, four, cinco, six, one, B, C, two, C, A, three, B, one, made in Manila, made in Manila, made in Manila, living in America. Spanalog lactose, uniformed thinking. Charlie Chan and Marilyn dancing on my head, dreaming slanty eyed fantasies where the king of Spain moons me in the middle of the day. The Japanese sumo samurai whatever champion opens his mouth to speak. And before he can say anything, the ocean breeze of the Pacific, or is it the Indian, brings over rich crackers filled with trilingual fortunes, naming, labeling, coining, the slogan of post-World War revolutions, you are not me. <laughs> Strange fruit of my story, her story, his story, the history of my naming, the odors of my birth, her birth, his birth, the scent of memories whistling in the eternal dine of remembrance in the wake of the endless breathing, the ceaseless sighing, the constant longing, the ever-present crack, the history of my secret, my natural birthmark. The history of my secret, the irony of immigration. The history of my secret, forget my Miranda rights. The history of my secret, you are not me. You are not me. The misery of my story, her story, his story, the archetype of myth, story, the, contra the contradictions of, 
The contradictions of historical, hysterical proportions, screaming, yelling, calling out from the shadows of oblivion known as current events. The manufacturing of consent in the face of import, export, minimum wage, maximum rage, extortion to the sounds of hello mother, hello father, where the hell's my shangrilada spill out from the borders of impoverished constructs of what is and what can't be to not or be to the other side of burning down the house of lords as they once fantasized the validity of white over dark, land over sea, Blood over spirit. Don't turn away from what is standing right in front of you. Don't turn away. Look at me. Look at her. Look at us. And tell me what you want. Don't succumb to the conventional. Be brave. Have courage. Help. You only live once or twice. So... Take a chance, let go. Come on along and listen to the lullaby of be to not or be to. Be to not or be to. Be to not or be to. Feel the languid movements reaching across the blinders of the nearsighted as they touch me in places I forgot were even there. Oh, yes. I turn around to see what's behind me. I turn around, I see behind me. I sense the remembrance of things before the nothing, the reminder of the nothingness of things, the emptiness of remembrance. In the nothing eternity lie the burning embers of my family's name, the strange fruit of my family's name hanging from the tree of life, the tree of life that sprouted from this strange fruit of first world aspirations. To know the unseeable, feel the unimaginable, taste the history of my secret, the history of my secret, the history of my secret, the history of my secret. You are not me. Beautiful. This was very beautiful. I, 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 I love the way you uh, created music hmm. by using words to dance by, right. if that makes any sense, right? Yeah. It's like you don't need actual music. The music, is, uh, the music are, uh, are the words. Yeah. Thanks for very recognizing. Very beautiful. Yeah, the text was by um, George Emilio Sanchez. He's actually at um, Staten Island, CUNY Staten Island, um, the chair of the art department um he i invited writers because i wanted to create a frame around the movement so that there's it's not literal but there's also um it's about something so we wanted to collaborate it in that way exactly what you said like music but it's text and incorporating all the feelings and um, images that came from visiting the Philippines. So the it's called the strange fruit and other secrets because the fruit, when I tasted the fruit of the Philippines, yeah, Sydney, you probably remember, um, that immediately brought me back to when I was a child and all these memories just flooded that taste of fruit. And also relating to the history of strange fruit that our culture was, you know, the Philippine American history or Philippine American war that's often overlooked. Um, so a lot of um, untold histories um, that um, that need to be told. Right. So and again, also that piece brought out that uh, the counting was the first experience that I lost my tongue, you know, the 
the actual uh, natural speaking of um, counting, that was the first time that I just really acknowledged that um, I can still understand fully Tagalog and Kapangpangan, but I'm not able to fully speak it anymore. But hopefully I can bring that back. Yeah. So we still have time. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Yeah. So I really appreciate this time with you all. Nice. Thank you. Uh, there are some comments you may want to read. I can share the transcript with you if you want after this because it is recorded. Um, any other questions or comments? Thank you. Okay, so um, thank you so much for this. It was beautiful. It was inspiring. Um, yeah, maybe we can connect some of our students and faculty um, with you at some point. Um, thank you to Dr. Archer for making the connection and bringing you to Artivism. Uh, thank you to Dr. Stephanie Lake for allowing us to land in her apartment and continue in her department and um, continue with this initiative. To Dean Lally, who supports us, um, to all of our sponsors, as we said early on, um, to Sarah. Um, hold on, I need to let somebody in. Um, yes, okay. Um, I don't know if Carolina wants to say something. She just got bumped off and we'll be right back. I'll put my website up again. Yes, please. Thank and you all to so much. Adelphi yeah. University's web team for constantly updating. I know we bombard them with um, updates and images and texts and dates and pretty much everything. Um, yes, and I found Carolina um, cannot come on. I know she always asks at the end. Uh, oh, there you are. Go ahead, Carolina. You yes, asked. The sorry, question. I was disconnected. I think it was towards the end of the video. So, uh, Ms. Tanjako, a pleasure to have you here. Thank you for this honor. And I would also like to um, uh, give a shout out to Dr. Archer from the Languages Department because thanks to her, we are having this conversation today. So, thank you, Dr. Archer, for this connection. And as you know, Artivism is about connecting, building networks. And I see that that's what you're doing with Topaz arts right so thank you for all that wonderful work that you're doing not only in queens anybody else from queens in the house yeah. shout out to queens <laughs> there we go there we go but throughout the world because with that powerful video that you share with us is what this is all about it's not just about the art form but the message that is conveyed through the art in building the inner self for a more productive and, like we say in artivism, powerful and dignified coexistence. Yes, thank so you. Definitely, yes. And um, as I was viewing all this, and the other day I was also attending another. Um, uh oh, we lost her. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh, yes. I know what Carolina does usually is she asks what your takeaway is. If you could take something away from this um, event, what would that be? For me or for? for you. <laughs> Sorry. For you, for you as a presenter, as part of this initiative. Yeah. Well, it's an opportunity, again, to just share um, how me how i got to this place that i'm at and also how we can share um together and each experience is unique right so we're here this screen zoom that we have but we you're, we're able to still connect in a way that's um deep yeah so i love that that we can um be together in different parts of from wherever we are and connect in a a really meaningful way. So I hope you guys got something out of it too. And I really enjoyed and thank you for this opportunity to share with you myself and also the space that we have here at Topaz Arts. Thank right. you. Let me try it again. Let me see if I can be on again. Am I on? Can you hear me? You are on, yes. <laughs> so as I was mentioning, um, I attended this other event where they were saying that the history of dance, well, you know, it hasn't been too open until recent decades, right? 
they were saying from that perspective how hard it was to portray non-European roles, non-European uh, choreographies, music, etc., etc. So would you tell us a little bit of the evolution of Topaz arts in that regard, in diversifying the dance as we saw it, but how would you put it in words for our audience here of the struggle and the, the effort that you have to put in because that beautiful piece doesn't happen just by itself. It has to have a lot of support at all different levels for us to be enjoying it and having this conversation through dance about, you know, like it was saying, you're not me, right? And all of the history that you put into that piece. So could you could you tell us a bit about how that piece came to be, please? Yeah, well, wow, that's a whole other <laughs> Zoom time, right? It's a lot, yeah. It's, um, I guess it's um, perseverance of really putting out there what needs to be put out, yeah. As an artist, we're, we're struggling to, one, be seen, um, two, being, um, you know, from a different culture, that's another level, right? But things are changing. So hopefully that by being here and by, you know, portraying what we can portray and um, support what we can support here at Topaz, that things are changing, yeah. So 20, 21 years ago, no one even thought of coming to Queens to rehearse. Yeah, that was, you know, unthought of. <laughs> so we were, we really wanted to create um, a space that would be here and um, we're still here. Um, I'm not sure if I'm answering your question, but um, I think that piece evolved really from the hunger of trying to know where my dance came from, but also uncovering a lot of history that was not seen. Um, again, like I said, the Philippine American war that was not covered and so a lot of things that um, needed to be discovered um, could be put out there in the world for more people to discover. So I hope that um, answers some of your questions. Yes, yes, definitely. And if I may do a follow up on it, it's, um, you know, from an administrator's perspective, it's not easy as well, because right. you mentioned grants for the space and to have all these marvelous uh, opportunities for other artists and your own practice to be housed in uh, Topaz, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, any words in regards to funding policy or regulations that we can address as a community to push our legislators perhaps to support the arts, to support these programs that are not just artistic but socially transforming, right? That is the whole point of artivism as well. No, thank you for that, because actually that is a struggle that we still have today because um, 21 years and it's, you know, we don't often get thanked <laughs> from, you know, the city and the people that should be thanking us. Oh, gosh, I'm recorded. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, it's be, it'd be nice to um, be thanked. Um, it's a lot of hard work, sweat and tears that we, Todd and myself, have really put into this project. Um, and yes, it's a lot of grant writing to be able to um, subsidize all those hours for artists. So yeah, it's, again, perseverance, keeping, keeping the space to support BIPOC artists um, and just, you know, really uh, seeking out the artists that need to be seen um, and be supported and keep on keeping on, keep trying and keep keep with your mission, right? Um, either as an artist or as an organization, um, being true to the body and our bodies and um, yeah, just being present. And yeah, we do need that support from outside um our our struggles are you know not being covered being overlooked um because where we are in woodside queens um a lot of focus is on long island city and all you know manhattan and um 
so we're we're still we're, we're still here so <laughs> that's a lot to say right um we're survivors <laughs> and yeah and throughout this pandemic as this pandemic has told us you know we're all connected our breath is connected um and so we we need to take care of each other so we're gonna keep going <laughs> i okay. hope this answers. would be this would be an entirely different um presentation or discussion but what would help would be a study of dance and the common thread throughout history throughout mm -hmm. different cultures of dance move, moves of rhythms what is that because there are definitely um common threads right um you know uh, from ancient times to present times from you know ancient greece to the philippines to the americas to you know a class or a study of that um brings people together also i did a food culture and art class um a few years ago actually uh, over a few a couple of years where we studied food culture through the arts and saw that we all had so much more in common. And that's what brought people back together again, is that we're not all that different, right? When you look at their art, all arts, whether it's food or dance or, or visual arts, we're very similar. But that's another class. <laughs> that's another presentation. Maybe you can come back and do another one, right? Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, exactly. Food, our bodies, we're all we share the same things and that's you know anatomy is the great equalizer for me that we all are skeleton and muscles and um breath so yeah yeah it'd be great to have like an embedded reporter as we go through <laughs> our daily lives right that's i think that's what artists need um writers to write about us and things like that um because it's difficult to do it all on your own yeah so if there's any writers out there who want to write a story <laughs> that's another collaboration yeah It'd be great yeah okay. so yeah if adelphi wants to take a visit here you know just let us know yeah be great um yeah i think we will um try and arrange it yes for sure yeah, okay great. thank you so much thank you for this inspiring enlightening um event thank you thank you be awesome. well, everyone, and join us again. Great. Thanks, all. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.